Lesson 2.2 Important Events The Trial of John Peter Zinger Last lesson we talked about a German man from the 14th century named Johannes Gutenberg. If you fast forward a couple of hundred years, we find another man of German descent, John Peter Zinger, living in the British colony of New York in the 1730s. Now, if you remember what we've learned earlier, you know no democracy can exist without a free press. And at this time, a country ruled by the people instead of a king was just an idea brewing in the British colonies in America. But something started happening with that idea. Newspapers and these things called pamphlets were being printed with these ideas. And people were reading them. Now, the problem is, is that the king and his royal government didn't like this very much because these papers were offering critical statements about them and their rule and they were beginning to lose their power. So John Peter Zinger was printing a local paper called the New York Weekly Journal and in his paper he published an article pointing out all of the shady stuff that his local royal king appointed governor was doing. The governor's name was William Cosby Actually, no, not this one. This William S. Cosby. Um, and the article that Zinger published accused Cosby of an assortment of crimes, including being really, really bad at his job of running things. And when this article was published, the governor immediately had Zinger arrested and thrown in jail. Zinger was charged with the crime of publishing information that went against the royal government. The crime was called libel. It didn't matter whether the facts published were true or false. He was simply jailed for publishing something that wasn't favorable to the people in charge. When the case went to trial, as you might guess, the jury was filled with men loyal to the governor and to the royal crown. But what they didn't expect was for Zinger's wife, Anna, to keep printing articles during the trial. Enough people read the articles and protested the trial and jury that the authorities were forced to reform the jury with a real, fair, and non-biased group that the governor couldn't control. Zinger's lawyer, Andrew Hamilton, made the case that though Zinger was guilty of printing things that went against the governor and government, he should still have the right and freedom to say those things. The judge told the jury to find Zinger guilty if they believe he printed the stories, but the jury talked it over in less than 10 minutes and came back with a verdict of not guilty. Essentially, they agreed that Zinger should have the right to print what he wanted, even if it criticized the people in power. This, of course, angered the governor and the king, and would be another stepping stone towards the American Revolution from Great Britain. It would also become one of the major reasons that the First Amendment was included in the U.S. Constitution, which is why we have freedom of speech and freedom of the press today. This amazing, shocking result to the trial would lead the way for the freedom that you have today to say what you think. So next time you send that controversial or critical tweet, thank your John Peter Zingers that you have the right to do it.